Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're doing a pond video this time. Um, pond maintenance, that's the watchword for this one. It's doing really well. If you've not seen any of my pond videos, there will be a playlist linked somewhere. But this is meant to be a wildlifey pond, a natural pond. It's not going for the koi pond with the crystal clear water or any of that nonsense. Um, at its very basis, it's a hole in the ground. It's got a pond liner in it. I've got this big oak barrel serving as a filter. So there's a pump in there comes in the side, up through various grades of stone and gravel, and then returns to the water. It does a great job at filtration in terms of healthy water. There's no ammonia or any of that nonsense in here. To explain the, the barrel filter, obviously I said it's got different gradients of gravel from larger to smaller uh, going through there, and the water goes in here. So you can see we've got two inlets there. Uh, one on the left, this one here, is the feed from the pump which sits in there. That comes in here and what it actually does is a pipe goes all the way up to the top, a T-piece, angle and all the way back down to the bottom. That means that the water starts at the bottom goes all the way up but should I turn the power off it doesn't immediately drain back into the pond. Um, so And that it works fine. The other one, where the hose is attached to now, is a flush. So if I turn that tap, basically it flushes all the gunk, because all the gunk settles to the bottom and it flushes all that out. And I also use it to drain the pond if I'm doing a water change like this. So, and I can just send that in a hose anywhere I want to feed and water the garden. And then the return back to the pond is from here. And that is from a pipe that starts away at the top comes down here and just kicks out with a, a tea piece and sends it back in with that little kind of waterfall effect. Looks pretty good. And that's the top of the pipe there. It's just an extra bit of sponge. And that gets pretty gunky, so it needs to be washed every now and again. There is an abundance of life, um, if anything, too much life. Um, and that's one of the problems. I can't tell exactly how much life because you can't see the water. It is pea green, it's dirty soup. It's a mixture of green water and dirty water. So as good a job as this does of cleaning the water to make it nice and healthy, it doesn't do anything for the clarifying of the water. So we've done, I haven't filmed it, but took this filter apart, cleaned out all the sludge uh, and put that back together and had it running for the last week or so. Again, it's not doing anything for the clarification, so that's that one checked and found not to be the problem. So I've invested in a different type of filter just to see if it makes a difference. Uh, and then we can think about a more permanent solution. For today's job is I'm going to just do a big water change. So if you ever want to clean your aquarium um, as much as you can filter the hell out of it, one of the easier things to do is just to get rid of some of the water and replace it with nice clean water. So we're going to do a big water change on a pond. Uh, I'm draining, that's what this hose here is doing, I'm draining the water away to various areas of the garden because it's been sunny for a few days here, the garden's quite dry. So I'm not going to waste this water, I'm going to use it to give the plants some nutrients around the garden um, and then we'll get it filled back up. See my new duck here? This is Deborah, Deborah the duck. She was a birthday present uh, <laughs> for my recent birthday. Um, but yeah, the plants are doing well, the lilies are coming up. We've got, yeah, all kinds of good growth on the plants and stuff. It's just, I can't see anything else in there. The only way I can see the fish is if I feed on the surface, like some flake or something, and then the fish come up to see the flake. Um, so we'll see if we can do that. But yeah, job number one, get all the water out. So one of the main problems I think I've got, with the green water at least, is that the sun rises over there. So apart from very early morning, this tree gives it some shade, but as soon as we get past kind of 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, the sun has got full access to this pond and it's in full sun for the rest of the day, pretty much. Um, the last couple of hours it's blocked by the house, but yeah, I think that's one of the main problems. So I might be fighting a losing battle, but I think I can get it a little bit cleaner than this. So the next thing I've got to tackle both the dirty water and the clean water is something with a bit more mechanical filtration in it and UV. So I've purchased this. This is a Facebook marketplace purchase as with all good Facebook marketplace stories. <laughs> it's a weird one. Um, so it's a pond expert filter. Um, the idea is what's meant to happen 
is the water comes in here, so there's a pump in there, you need to buy the pump separately obviously, the pump pumps the water and it comes in here. This includes a UV filter, so it's got an 18 watt UV filter um, attached to it, so it's, it's clarifying or sterilising the, the water as it comes in. It goes through this first section, which should be sponge, um, uh, all the way down, that's just a purge valve, so if you want to empty it, so it goes through there, as you can see it's got this little baffle in it with holes at the bottom, so the water goes in through the sponge, up through some bio balls, or any biological media that you've got, it came with all these bio balls, which I do not like and do not recommend, but hey, if they're there, that's fine, I'm just going to have all sponge in here, bio balls in there, water rises back up here, and forced through the holes here, over to this final end, which goes through another layer of finer sponge, some more bio balls, just because there's a billion of them, and then comes up through this central tube, and out to return back to the pond. Now the idea is that you either bury this box, or just have it somewhere unobtrusive, um, obviously the water comes in this side, goes through this way, and comes out that way, so I was thinking I'd maybe stick it under the tree there, and hide it out of the way, but for now, we're just going to put it here, um, just to see whether or not it's worth it because I don't really want to have a big ugly if it doesn't make any difference I'm not going to use it basically but when I bought it um, the way the guy had it set up <laughs> I hope he's not watching but it couldn't have been set up any more wrong if he tried if there was a decision to made he made the wrong one and um, so the baffles were the wrong way around he had the intake coming in here so basically the water was coming in here and going straight back out again it wasn't even going into these six it was filling them up but it was just going yeah, straight out ineffective as hell he had all these bio balls were in so there was no room for sponge or anything the sponge actually sat above this which is above the water line so the sponges would never have got wet and the bottom of them might got wet um yeah and the baffles were the wrong way around so it was it wouldn't it couldn't it just wouldn't have worked and it didn't work i did run it as he gave it to me for a couple of days and thought oh, this is a bit rubbish that's why so we'll get it set up properly uh, sponge bio balls return see if it makes any difference to the uv i'm not expecting it to make any like instant changes but i suspect at least some of that is dirty water rather than just green water so the uv will deal with the green water a little bit and the extra sponges and finer mechanical filtration will deal with the dirty a little bit and i'm hoping that lots of little bits betters will make a big change right we've got it drained uh, a couple of feet down, it's it's not even near halfway down, but I think that's as much as I'm comfortable doing. So we're going to get filled back up again. Uh, filled back up, I'll just use our regular garden hose. Um, it is connected to a version of the HMA filter that I've got, like a big carbon block. Um, so it'll get rid of chlorine. Um, and it's just a case to... Leaving that sitting, I'll take a couple hours. I've put that filter over there. It's kind of running at a dribble now because the pump that's attached to it is the worst pump in history. I will insert a link. Do not buy this pump. It is terrible. But it's good enough for this. Um, it's actually quite good that it's sort of running at a dribble because the slower the water goes past the UV light, the more chance the UV has to have an impact on it. But in terms of clarifying and filtering, I'm not moving a lot of water through it, so it has that drawback. So I'm probably going to buy another pond pump. Um, but yeah, maintenance wise, everything should be healthy. And once we get this filled back up, we'll have another look and make sure everything's okay. I've decided to put it around there rather than here, just because from when I look at it from the house, which is behind us, these plants obscure it so I can't see it. So that's why <laughs> um, I was debating using the the pump that's actually filtering through the barrel at the moment it's a lot lot better flow and I was wondering if I could put the two together so run it through the barrel and then through this which I might play around with later but there's nowhere to really hide it over there so I'd need to find some way of running more I don't know we'll figure it out um, I'm not entirely sure we're going to keep this filter here for a long time anyway. It might just be a temporary thing to see if it does clean it up. And if it does, and UV is the thing that's making the difference, then we might invest in a UV in a different way that just hides it a little better. But for now, 
that's pretty good. Let it fill up and see what happens. Um, I'm already seeing the fish a lot more because there's a lot less water to keep them in and there's lots in there so stick around to see how many fish there actually are and the ones that are in there, the colours, because the water is so green, the one thing about green water is that it does make the fish colours pop, something ridiculous. So the ones that do have good colours, fantastic. But yeah, where's a heron when you need one to control your population? Right, it's the next day, um, well just after the next day. To me it does look a bit clearer, um, the water certainly coming out of the filters looks a bit clearer. A bit pathetic coming out of that, well a bit pathetic, extremely pathetic coming out of that one. So I definitely need a new pump. Um, so I'm going to get a better pump for that one and in a few days that should make a difference. But I've got my highly scientific uh, measuring stick here. So this is like my clarity indicator, so I've got a white um, <laughs> bit of cable tie at the bottom and they're just marked out centimetres in Sharpie. So we were at just under kind of nine, ten centimetres was the best that I could do previously. So I'll see if yesterday's efforts made any difference. So we're at kind of yeah 15 centimetres. Is all that really worth it for an extra five centimetres? Anyway, let's do what I love best about the pond and we'll feed the fish and have a look at the fish because this is the reason that I want to be able to see these things. Um, I do love spending time out here. The pond is fantastic. Loads of wildlife, loads of dragonflies, all kinds of be beasts and bugs come here. We've had frogs, we've had tadpoles, but it's the fish, the fish. Uh, as well as all the wildlife and the plants and everything are doing, it's the fish that I want to see. So I'll just show you what the final problem with this pond is. So this is my favourite part. I don't know how well we'll be able to see this, given the glare. I don't know how well we can see this given the glare, but this is one of the best things that I can do. I spend my time out here feeding the fish, especially with the flake. It usually takes one or two and then there's a bit of a feeding frenzy goes on, but look at the colours of some of the larger ones. It's so bright and that's one of the, the benefits of green water. But it usually takes one or two of them out and feeding then there's a bit of a feeding frenzy goes on but look how many fish there is there's far too many and this is just the ones over here they're everywhere uh, there's far too many fish so need ideas for how to slow this population growth because if they keep multiplying like this every year we'll just have fish there'll be no water there won't be enough room for any water and some of the larger ones so beautiful. So someone suggested getting some koi, putting some koi in there that'll take care of any more babies. But I feel like I need it to be a bit clearer to be able to see the koi more often. But at least I can see some fish. So that's pond update number one if you like this kind of thing and you want to see what happens when I do add a better pump to that filter. Are we going to get it much clearer? Who knows? Um, we can't make it worse <laughs> than that dribble. So click that subscribe button, that's what people do. Come back in a few weeks, see if we an update and see if it did make any difference. If you get any pond tips, I am a newbie at ponds as you may be able to tell. Let me know in the comments or come and join me on a Friday evening at 9pm UK time we do a live stream every week. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.